Th thanks very much, Ivan, for, for, uh, for that complimentary perspective. Uh, we've got a few minutes for discussion. I just wanted to start myself just with one question. Uh, I'm going to put it to Peter. It's most directly related to what you were saying, but I'd invite all the other panel members if they want, wish to comment on this. And again, it's to come back to something that Bernard was mentioning. When he was presenting the six core um, uh, priorities, uh, he put the, the strategic framework separately as, as the cross-cutting one, relating it to uh, the political uh, willingness. Uh, you were giving a sort of overall view on the basis of where the countries are uh, on the basis of a number of indicators. Uh, you were talking about goodwill. I'm not quite sure whether goodwill is the same thing as political will uh, or that's slightly different. But what's, how would you, to sum up, say the state of play is on the buy-in at the political level of having a proper strategic framework for, for all these? And also, uh, any of the other <coughs> panelists who have an opinion on this would be invited to comment. I would say that... Um where there is political will, there is also goodwill. So that is one of the one of the lessons we know. So we haven't encountered any of the countries where the political will is actually reverse in terms of what they want to strive for on public administration reform. The political will is not necessarily ensured and consistently ensured in all the countries. That's that's for sure. Uh, and what is particularly important is that even if it is ensured, it is ensured for the design of the reform, but not for the implementation. So we find that the attention, the political attention is substantially, can substantially drop when the implementation issues comes, comes forward. However, I must say that the the key tools for policy dialogue, mainly the special groups for public administration reform, which is the one of the highest level or the highest level dialogue between the Commission and, and the countries on public administration reform, anyway gives a huge input into maintaining public administration reform constantly on the floor of the, of the political sphere. <clears throat> Does anybody else from the panel wish to come in on this, comment on this? Yes. Yeah. Well, what, what we saw in, in many projects is uh, that the political will can, of course, be a bit massaged and uh, kept upright by very clever project management. And if the project uh, managers um, who are um, dealing uh, at the border between political level and, uh, and employee level are regularly presenting positive messages which the political level can use, uh, it, it helps in uh, keeping the interest of the political level higher. Okay, that's an important lesson. Okay, so let's move to the floor. Um, questions? Yes. The commission. And the commission. <laughs> Didn't understand. Just to, you to stimulate okay. a little bit the, the discussion. Please. Um, I, I liked in the last presentation there was sort of a hint at, you know, when we, that uh, public administration reform has an element of, of sort of permanent improvement. Yeah. And I would like to maybe challenge a little bit sort of the, the, the Sigma approach that, first of all, uses very much the reform word. I mean, many people, many administrators, they shudder when they hear the word reform because it means it's something scary and you don't know the, the outcome. Very often we, we reform and we don't improve. And, and I think also we have to be careful not to become too rigid to say, okay, we have to plan a big reform and design it, and then the planning stops and the implementation starts. I think the reality is much more iterative yeah, and I, I I don't want to say that you know this is sometimes you really need a reform. For example, in Spain, they found out they had huge institutional overlaps between the national and regional level, and they sorted it out, and that was a reform. However, I think we should develop a culture of permanent improvement, and this is what I what I like when we look at at uh, Marga Broll's presentation. All the cases we had, they were not grand reforms; they were people 
that had the autonomy to think about the problems and, and to uh, uh, find solutions to problems. And I think we have to develop a culture in this direction. So I think I, I would sort of advocate, yes, we need sometimes uh, uh, grand reforms because the, the current system is just not fit for purpose. But grand reforms also introduce a lot of instability in the system, which tends to be bad. But let's develop uh, a culture of, you know, of permanent reflection and permanent improvement. Okay, I'll give, uh, you want to erect, come in immediately, I can see. Yes. If I can. <laughs> um, we don't disagree on that, that, that's for sure. However, at the current state, and that is, that is quite imminent now, um, because of the scope of the problems, it is not simply, fine, simply time for fine-tuning. So there are certain areas on public administration reform on the basis of the, of the lessons learned where, where actually you need to, to be engaged in the Western Balkan countries and in Turkey in grant reforms. On the other hand, you are absolutely right on that it, and that was one of my key message, that it needs to be included into a proper policy cycle. And the proper policy cycle is always including a, a constant reflection. That is why it is also important to set properly the targets of any intervention, be it grand or smaller, measure how you are performing against those targets, and then readjust your policy if that is needed. That is why it is equally important that when you are designing any kind of policy intervention, you parallel design also how you are going to measure and what is going to be the institutional process for, for the adjustment if that is needed. So we don't, don't disagree on that at all. However, my, my, my statement is that in terms of big leaps on public administration reform, Vis -vis within the European uh, context and the European integration context actually requires quite substantial reforms nowadays in the Western Balkan countries and Turkey. Okay. Um, Thomas? Uh, um, maybe I just want to stress what has been said. Um, uh, those working with public administration reform, always here, it's not sexy. And also in the preparation of the conference, I heard this. It's not a sexy topic. Why are you doing that? Um, yeah, it's not sexy and it hurts. Um, but when I see the EPSA cases and also the, um, and we have, we, have, we have not just EPSA, we have also other competitions and good practices. Uh, when I see them, I see, I mean, maybe it's too much to say it's sexy, but I see it's living um, and it's motivating. And, and this motivation gives, in my view, a, a, a kind of uh, sustainability. So, so there is really, in my view, a big need for more integration of the two, of the two uh, approaches. Huh? Because also, what comes after accession, for example, after SIGMA, is then the public administration reform over. Uh, yeah. I heard this can happen. Uh, or what is the sustainability? And the sustainability for me lay, lies in these uh, competitions, in, the, in the showing the good, the, the good examples, and in, in motivation. And that's why I like these EPSA approaches. And thank you very much for the, for the cases, uh, very much. All right. Um, any more requests for the floor? I see one in the first row. Please, is anybody else? Because I'd like to group together. If not, please, your question for the panel or your comment. Well, uh, thank you, first of all, for very inspiring presentations. They, they were all very good. Uh, I think uh, there are few elements for effective public administration reform. I will cite one of our former presidents that uh, local governments are like laboratories for innovation. And he was saying, uh, the, the, the ministries, the, the governments cannot uh, afford to experiment because if they fail, that's a disaster for the whole nation. And, but local governments can now and then make some experiments uh, with the trial and error. And uh, that's why we see, as Thomas said, these, uh, these examples were very inspiring because they, they were behind that are courageous politicians, local politicians who took the step to experiment 
and to, uh, and to innovate. So innovation is very important, but there are two other elements. Uh, the evidence-based that were stressed, uh, the, the information uh, that, is, uh, that should be produced uh, not only on project basis, uh, but uh, uh, there should be uh, institutions that will uh, produce it regularly, annually. So uh, whether they are NGOs or think tanks or uh, public uh, sector organizations, uh, these should be encouraged. And, uh, and uh, the third element is the, the dialogue. Uh, so when you have innovations, you have also uh, information. Uh, you can then enter into the dialogue. And, and uh, at NALAS, we are promoting all these elements, especially the intergovernmental dialogue local government associations and that represent uh, these uh, local politicians uh, uh, that come with innovations, come with, uh, with their specific uh, ideas and uh, the national government who then should enter into public administration reform uh, that will be uh, um, <clears throat> implementable. So uh, also all these elements are actually the basis for a bottom-up approach. And uh, the top-down approach is Maybe that's the reason why we are saying 20 years, no results. Maybe that's the reason. Because 20 years we have done a, a top-down approach. All right, thanks uh, very much. We, we're seriously running out of time. You would, uh, would you like to react to this? OK, so I give you the floor for a general roundup discussion, uh, contribution, and then. Thank you. Well, uh, I would like to uh, react to the, the, these two um, um, mentioning of good cases, innovations which we can find, but we have um, a serious uh, issue, I believe. Uh, the issue is that um, innovation needs a lot of courage, and in uh, uh, what, whatever level you look at, national level, regional level, or local level, civil service is not there to uh, experiment or mis make mistakes. So there is a kind of dia dialectic uh, situation between innovation and doing uh, the right thing in the, and following the law. So for bridging this very difficult situation, we need a kind of uh, awareness and courage of leadership in public administration. And I was, um, uh, I was witness and part of a discussion which recently took place in the UPAN DG meeting in uh, Amsterdam last, last week. And uh, there, this particular issue was discussed. And um, everybody was of the opinion, the director generals who are dealing with uh, civil service and selection and education of leaders for the public administration, everybody was in agreement that we should have more leaders who are selected with regard to helping public administrations to reform from inside, organize reform processes, encourage innovation, start these kind of processes in the small uh, laboratories and make them to bigger um, uh, developments, but it was, uh, there was not really a lot of knowledge yet of how to do that, because we are in this dialectic thing and we are a bit caught in that. So all the innovations and many others I could have shown to you, uh, they are um, developed with particular courage of individual or groups of people in administrations. So we should really be grateful for, to them. Uh, but on the other hand, what uh, I think is really necessary is a broader approach, which is helping the administrations to put the right leaders into the situation and encourage these, um, the, the responsible people to go for more innovation. But that is, uh, we are far from there. Okay, thanks very much. We will probably have to stop now in a minute. I just give the opportunity to other panel members if you wish to make any uh, concluding comments on, on what's been said. Um, yes, Santiago. Yes. 
I mean, I really like the comment that was made here about the necessity of uh, information and information development. I think you are right, and I totally agree that indicators could uh, trigger a reform. And in many occasions, they signal that there is an area of improvement, but that they should also accompany reform, and at the end should be used to measure the, the result of that reform. So I, I fully agree with this idea of uh, incorporating the, the generation of consistent information for, for the, throughout the cycle of the, of the reform. Okay, thanks very much. I think we'll have to break for lunch now. Um, the, and uh, it's over there, the same place as where the coffee is, I think, from what I understand. Um, and we should be back for 13.45? Yes, we start sharp 1345 uh, with, the, with the next session. And thanks very, very much to all the panelists for their excellent contributions to our discussions this morning. <laughs>